In this video, we build a factory that makes robots for 22 Veil, our custom LEGO City project with a unique house for every Series 22 CMF. With a slide, conveyor belt inside, and totally ethical practices, this is the long-awaited home to the robot repair tech. This figure is one of my absolute favorites. The printing head to toe is immaculate. Love the clever use of the welder's mask. And I especially like the gold printing underneath, representing circuitry in the robot's head, which is running low on battery. You better charge it. It also comes with a hammer, alternate arm drill attachment, and best of all, he built himself a cute little friend who he named Sparky. Straight out of Toy Story. Lego sure has come a long way since the first robot minifigure in series one. These two are inseparable. Talk about robot's best friend. He even built a little doghouse for Sparky. Look how nice that is. It really fills out the space nicely and now we only have one more house left thanks for watching and actually you know what the robot kind of wants more friends this build is fine i mean i'm content with this but he is programmed to want more so let's just scrap this one and build a factory that's even bigger like bigger than six by six according to his blueprints we can actually fit not one but two of these 16 by 16 base plates here building out the foundation with gaps for a back door the main entrance and this removable wall we're gonna have a light gray floor and stripe along the walls, mostly because that's the only color I have this piece in. These foundation walls are looking really bland so far. Nothing a little decoration can't fix. Now it's finally time to start using yellow. Over by the door, we have all this snot to add on a bunch of detail, like a spigot pipe that spews out the factory's waste. Let's just clean that up and dispose of it. And this meter to track the level of pollution. It's probably fine. On the inside, we don't have space for a working conveyor belt, but if you put some studs into a Technic brick, it looks just like a series of wheels. On top, we can have a nice smooth belt with studs to mark each step of the assembly process. Parts come in from this opening, and using the various arms attached to the wall, we can build more and more friends like Sparky. Except only three of these eyepieces were included, so this one's just gonna be called Winky. As the factory gets bigger, we can assemble more and more Robo friends, and maybe even get a glimpse of the top secret Project C22. No idea what that's about, but let's just focus on building up the walls for now. About this tall. I built these completely sporadically. A little bit in the front, started up in the back, and I tried to salvage this side area before before just giving up on it again. During that time, Techie was assembled, and then I finished the front and the back up to the height of the door frame. I still want the back wall to be removable, but with all these pillars, doors, and what I have planned over here, currently all the walls are pretty flimsy. So to add some extra support and detail, let's add a gray stripe all the way around. Well, we probably don't want to seal the back wall in place, so not all the way around. And then, yeah, I probably should talk about the elephant in the room. This gap into the conveyor belt is really inconvenient to dump parts into, so we'll make a slide leading into the gap, and it's honestly more inconvenient, but it looks cool, so solid improvement? That's why this siding is here at the bottom. It doesn't really work, but I also took Batgirl's cape to slow the parts down even more. That also doesn't work, but bottom line, slide looks cool. So let's just thank Whirly for the demonstration and move on. How are we going to build the wall around the slide? That, that's not a rhetorical question. I literally have no idea. I struggled a bit trying to add some detail here. Most of it will be covered up anyways, but I think that's good. We've got all four walls up to the same level now, and the pollution level is also rising. That, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Let's just continue work on the interior. I'm adding a staircase leading up to a catwalk, but let's fill in the details on the main floor while I can still reach. We've got a bay of computers here so the tech can automate the process more. This one's named Locky. There's a generator in this corner, very similar to the one powering 22 tube, except that one hasn't been producing much lately for some reason. So I had to build another that connects to the disposal pipe outside. We need this ramp here to roll a dolly carrying parts up to the door. No, oh, not that kind. And underneath the stairs, we'll store everything we need, including this fire extinguisher behind protective glass to break in case of emergencies. While we were doing that, it looks like another robo friend was assembled. Cookie. On the walls, we can hang up a warning sign, this hook, and with the main floor done, we'll top it all off with a catwalk. Before decorating up here, I should probably finish the rest of the walls. First the front, looks a little plain for now, and then the wall with the slide. The back wall has an AC unit and this little cover over the slide entry, as demonstrated by Candy here. And finally, the wall above the side entrance. The reason I left the front so plain was to install this sign above the door. Robot. Not sure if that's the name of the factory or just what it produces. You'll have to ask the higher ups about that one, literally. Higher up here on the catwalk, we can build a small office for the owner of the factory. They're not here right now, but we've got a nice computer, an intercom system to deliver messages with a loudspeaker, and a water cooler. I want to have some blueprints hanging on the wall too. Oh, this again. Eh, I hate to admit it, but it actually kind of works. We also have our surveillance camera in the opposite corner, keeping a watchful eye over the assembly of... Peachy? 
Yeah, sure. The room will be illuminated by these large lights hanging from some very industrial looking rafters, which will definitely be needed after we cover it all up with a roof. You can't remove the roof, but that's why we made the back wall the way we did, so there's still a way to see inside. On top, we got three smokestacks built out of orange, a nice tie back to the figure's color scheme, and some other random details. It still needs some centerpiece though, and looking at the giant toucan on top of the bird watching station gave me the idea to build a giant version of Sparky to perch on this little ledge here. With one final robo friend constructed, this one's named Spe Becky, we'll put all the bots we made inside, pose our OGs in front, and I think this thing is finally complete. I really love how each wall is totally unique. We've got the slide, the whole interior, and this just turned out great. Before we add to the city, I want to pound down these additional base plates first. They give the build a little more height off the ground, especially for the front door, and now we can more easily pick it up. Leading off to the side, we have this loading dock area, a little raised platform where shipments can come in from the train and trash can be thrown out straight into the dump. It finally completes this missing gap here in the fence, but speaking of Disposal? How's that pollution going? Oh. Oh, oh no. It's... It's starting to mutate the local wildlife? No! Specky too? Oh no, poor little guy. Y you know, we should probably start barreling up this waste and loading onto the train so we can actually get rid of it. <laughs> That's the last we'll see of that. Oh. Well, we can add some plates and other random details to fill up the empty space on either side of the tracks. But I just hope the contamination doesn't get any worse. Oh boy. I wonder how this will affect the development of Project C22. Before we get to that though, let's take a moment to appreciate the penultimate property of the city. This build fills out the space a lot better than that tiny dog house did. Maybe it actually fills a little too much space? We literally have no room for the final house. But that's a problem for later. There's also the pollution problem? For, for later. Whatever. Let's just see what this Project C22 is all about. We may have another problem. 